Reformed epistemologists propose that a belief in God can be rationally held without inference from other beliefs, so long as it is reasonable and consistent with a worldview that is not absurd. Ontological naturalism, on the other hand, is a commitment to the order of being posited by our best empirical theories. An order, for example, in which an electron is more substantial than God, that is, in which an electron has fewer parts than God, can be conserved when God is destroyed, and in which the existence of an electron does not depend upon the existence of God. This video proposes that ontological naturalism is somewhat more similar to the reformed epistemologist's belief in God than they would care to admit. According to the reformed epistemologist, belief B is reasonable when 1. The job of a cognitive faculty is to produce true belief. 2. B is the product of cognitive faculties doing their job. 3. The cognitive faculties that produce B do not cast doubt on B. A worldview is the framework of mental states through which we interpret and interact with our environment. A worldview is absurd when it suffers from self-contradiction, that is, when it produces statements that deny each other. According to Reformed epistemology, a belief can be accepted without further inferential justification when it is both reasonable and consistent with a non-absurd worldview. An ontological naturalist can admit that the job of our cognitive faculties is to produce true belief. There is no difficulty in admitting this whilst being committed to the order of being posited by our best empirical theories. Furthermore, the means by which we select our best empirical theories also happens to be our best way of producing true beliefs. Science. Methodological naturalism is characterised by its application of safeguards that have proven effective in warding off the errors to which our cognitive faculties are prone. Ontological naturalism is a commitment to the order of being posited by the best results of methodological naturalism. Ontological naturalism is thus a product of our cognitive faculties doing their job. Despite Alvin Plantinga's evolutionary argument against naturalism, it is possible that the cognitive faculties of which ontological naturalism is a product do not cast doubt on ontological naturalism. The evolutionary argument against naturalism claims that there is no situation in which everything we need to talk about in order to establish truth is natural, our cognitive capacities evolved, and evolution does not select for truth. The impossibility of such a situation casting doubt on ontological naturalism given the correct operation of our cognitive faculties. However, it is plausible that truth taken as a convention includes but is broader than truth as correspondence, and that there is a process of cultural evolution that is supervenient upon but additional to the products of biological evolution. There is thus a possible situation in which everything we need to talk about in order to establish truth, as a convention, is natural, our cognitive capacities evolved both biologically and culturally, and in which biological evolution alone does not select for truth as correspondence. The evolutionary argument against naturalism thus fails. Finally, part of what makes an empirical theory the best is its coherence. A lack of internal contradiction promotes an empirical theory. Ontological naturalism is derived from our best empirical theories. Thus, ontological naturalism is consistent with a non-absurd worldview. Therefore, if the reformed epistemologists are right, but the evolutionary argument against naturalism is wrong, we can believe in ontological naturalism without 
inference. We are as justified, without further evidence, in believing that an electron is more substantial than God as we are in believing in God. Thank you for listening.